Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson, and I just had chin surgery last week, so it's a bit it's a bit big today, but you know it'll cool down in about three months. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about something that I was talking to my friend about, which is sexuality and the change. And I was recently talking to a cis woman about this because she's going through a sexuality change, and she's confused and she doesn't fully understand it. And I thought that, you know, this is a really powerful um, experience as a trans woman and uh, probably a little bit more complex as a trans woman, but I think equally as valuable for cis people as well if they feel a little gender, uh, not gender, but sexuality questioning. Um, so I dropped my lipstick on the ground. So I wanted to go through that today and break that down for you, ask you some questions, throw some things out there to consider as you go through this process yourself, and maybe even share some tips to help you understand your own sexuality and how you shift and how you move. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience as it relates to my sexuality changes, which by the way, are continuing to change and maybe I'll have time to go into that as well. But the first part is juicy, so we should also cover that. So, um, I was a cis straight male until about 2018, and then I identified as non-binary, but I was still dating women, and even when, um, well, I mean, this is interesting. So when I was in a long-term relationship with someone for four years, she started to want to date women, and I started to want to move towards my gender and experience that. Ultimately, we broke up, but I turned into a trans woman, and she turned into a lesbian, and how does that work? But my following partner, who I actually transitioned with, this sexuality shift happened organically, and it happened over a year. Now, before I go into this, I should also call out that there's two main categories that I see with trans women who transition and how their sexuality evolves or actually doesn't change. There's one camp of uh, trans women that are super into women and then they take hormones, they transition, and they're still just as much super into women. That's one category. The other category is you are into women uh, and maybe you're into men as well, but then estrogen kind of kicks in and suddenly you're super into men. You may even go straight um, and you may just be like, oh my God, like all I can think about is men because they really just get me. I'm always into women as well now, but it, it's it's basically men are my primary target. <laughs> Just gonna you know put these on them and try and try and get their attention because those are the ones that I enjoy. Even though I don't necessarily enjoy uh, you know having anal sex all the time, I do enjoy sex with men. So. I thought at the time that I was basically just into women and into my partner. But what ended up happening is somewhere, okay, so I should talk about this sexuality evolution because this is important. So taking the hormones, after about three months with my partner who we had been dating for a month when I started taking hormones, our sexuality experience changed. I didn't wanna be the top. I didn't wanna be the dominant one. I actually wanted to be more receptive and to receive and to also be uh, the, the, more, the bottom, the submissive. Now, she's a, um, a, she was, she's an intersex woman with a vagina and she, um, she was okay with the shift in the power dynamics, but she and I still had sex in a way where I would be penetrating her. It's just she would be on top or she would be the more in control one or in the more dominant one in the bedroom. And that kind of evolved over the year that we were together as my hormones shifted and my pleasure changed. My pleasure center went from my genital region to moving more to the touch and the feelings all over the body and not just down there until I also couldn't orgasm anymore. And so that was weird and that was concerning. But right around the year point, I had this experience where I was just catching a lift and the guy who was a driver was this really big masculine 
macho guy, and he like he was like f making flirty comments, being very confident and strong, and just got this huge masculine energy field around him, and he was just kind of pushing me a little bit energetically, and I was like, oh, that kind of puts me in this really feminine small kind of vulnerable space that I like. It feels validating. It. I, that energy and that vibe makes me feel really good and, and valid and feminine. Maybe, maybe I want to date men. And that question kind of opened up a huge portal where I had to go, wait a second, I'm dating a woman, but I want to date a man. How do I achieve this? Well, we're supposed to be um, non-monogamous, so I can go down that path, right? Well, you know, cases after being starting actually being non-monogamous and going on my first date, uh, the relationship ended up breaking up. But it didn't matter because at that point, that first date, I felt with a guy, and we went we went back to his place. I felt so feminine and such a woman being the woman in the bedroom, suddenly having this role as a female totally opened up my experience in a way that I just couldn't have with a woman. And I think it's because when you're in a gay relationship, you kind of have this splitting up of roles in a less binary way where there's someone's the more dominant, the other one's the more submissive in one area, but then you have these other areas where they're not. And the gender roles are all just confused and different. Not confused, but you know what I mean. They're crossed in all sorts of ways. But having it with a cis man, oh my God, he's like older and has a beard and he has a nice house that overlooked San Francisco. And he's very respectful, burning man guy, but also successful. I was like, oh my God, I'm just like dying. And you're emotionally intelligent and you can cook great food. Fuck. Um, and so when I was with him and he was taking me and, and kissing me and all sorts of things, I just, I just felt so open and so vulnerable in a way that I just couldn't have with a woman. And so I was hooked. That, that kind of changed everything for me because at this point, I'm a newly minted trans woman a year on HRT and I'm having this incredibly powerful validating experience with another person where suddenly I get to slot myself into the female role. In a gay relationship, you know, there's no female and male role because you're both females. So then like I got to slot myself in there, he would hold my hand, he would take me out to dinner, we, he would shelter me under an umbrella. When we go to the rain, he'd open doors for me. Just all of these things and holding his hand. Oh, I was like, oh my God, I've been missing it the whole time. This is what I've been wanting and I never even knew that. So that first date pretty much just changed everything for me and it just snowballed from there. I like dick and I like men and I like the masculine side of things. Now the, the I like dick comment is a little bit more complicated because <laughs> because I also like trans women. Yeah, and um, I mean, I don't like say, well, I only date pre-op trans women or non-op trans women, but I do like non-op trans women and a lot of them like to top me. So I'm very much into that too. Now that's a slightly different experience because I mean, you know, it's not dating a man, but it is being in that submissive role. And for me, that puts me in a space where I let go. I can just move into the vulnerability of my heart and experience being a woman in a way that I want to experience being a woman. There's many ways you can experience being a woman, like putting on your, your, your like having nails, getting your hair done, all that stuff. That's all great. But for me, that's the adventure. That's where there's so much intense energy and potential transformation as you have these spontaneous experiences that help reveal to you something that you may or may not know. You know, you have a, do you have any of those moments where you're in the middle of sex and there's some intensity that happens that increases it a couple notches and you kind of take it in and go, it's like taking a breath of fresh air where you feel alive and you feel a new part of you has been awoken and you go, oh my God, this is totally a part of me that I didn't even know was there. 
that is just, it's so beautiful. And when it, you feel it in a way that it feels validating, oh my God, oh, so, so good. So when kind of thinking about this in sexuality, I think that the main thing that you might want to explore is what feels right to you, what feels good, what feels like it's going to uh, lead you in a direction where it, it's making you excited, it's making you happier. This is the kind of stuff that I, I would recommend you do. And if you have like a hint of, you know, maybe I'm gay or maybe I'm straight, kind of like follow that that thread a little bit. I encourage you to just take steps to look at that because you ultimately cannot answer the sexuality question until you've made steps to experience something that helps you calibrate and find that inner knowing within you. I'm Ashley Adamson and uh, please join my Discord community down below in the links and uh, I'll see you in another episode. If you want to support me, also hit up my Patreon. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, bye darlings.